Hey everybody, Justin Queen here with Fish Ohio Outfitters, and today we're tying up some flies for smallmouth bass. Smallmouth fly number three. Uh, we're gonna tie a game changer. Um, let's talk a little bit about that platform and what that word even means. Um, game changer, um, all credit goes to Blaine Chocolate. My favorite game changer pattern for smallmouth is feather changers. Um, I have caught as many smallmouth on feather changers than probably any other streamer in my box. You can tie these things together however you want. You can, you can have three sections, four sections, five sections, six sections. I mean, some people really go to town on these and, and have eight, nine, ten. Um, <clears throat> this one, in the interest of keeping it simple, um, I'm going to do um, three pieces in the tail section, a rear hook, which is a uh, number four Gamorous by Arex, uh, and then I'm gonna have two 15 millimeter sections between the Gamorous and my two aught uh, Kona BGC. Um, and that is the bones, if you will, of the fly. So in the vise, I've already got a tail shank ready to go. Um, the materials we're going to be using for this one are whiting American hen saddles. Um, good luck finding these things. They can really be a pain in the neck. Uh, Schultz Outfitters is who I get these from and I call up there and tell them what I'm looking for. And uh, they've always been really good about getting me exactly what I ask for. So uh, you should do the same. Uh, I've got my shanks, my hooks. I'm going to be using uh, the Just Add H2O flash blend bait fish brush as my prop material and uh, some connection wire. Uh, this is Surflon um, 26 pound, which is more than enough for any smallmouth or pike that might decide to eat this thing. So here we go. Uh, I'm gonna grab, I actually pulled some of these, um, some of these like chickaboo type feathers off of um, my American hen saddles. Um, and as you can see, they're nice and fluffy. They make for great tail sections. So I'm just gonna pull these back, strip away any excess material there. And we're just gonna tie these in on either side. Same thing over here. stems out. Now the color combination that I'm going to use today <clears throat> is um, what we call grapefruit. And so I'm going to add some fluorescent yellow over top of those whites just to tone those in a little bit. So these are typically feathers that you would just be throwing away. And uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead and just use them to create my tail. So nick those stems off. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab two pieces of lateral scale out of the hank here. I'm gonna lick those to kind of stick them together. And then I'm gonna tie in on one side then I'm gonna pull that around, tie that same strand in on the other side, and then pinch, make sure I've got both of them, and then I'm gonna cut them off just a little bit longer than my tail. And that's just gonna add a tiny little bit of flash to the tail of a fly. I'm not looking to make this overly flashy. Next thing I'm gonna do is grab my white hen saddle out of the package and my fluorescent yellow saddle out of the package and I'm looking for this to be a little softer in color so I'm not going to go using straight fluorescent yellow I'm actually only going to use one fluorescent yellow and one white now in the back on this tail section I'm maybe going to get two or three turns so what I'm going to do now is just light up, line up the tips, strip or stroke those fibers back. 
And then while holding those, I'm just gonna clip that off and tie in that little triangular section. Now again, this is the tail section. I'm not looking for bulk. The idea is, is that bulk builds moving forward in the fly. So no prop is needed back here. I'm just gonna stroke those fibers back and we're gonna make one, two, maybe three complete turns. And then we're gonna tie that off. Whoops, tie that off. Stroke all those fibers back. And tag it with just a little bit of super glue. Easy peasy. All right, take my 10 millimeter shank. We're gonna connect it through the eye of the tail shank. Right there, you can see we have the tail of our fly started. Okay, <clears throat> now I have my flash blend bait fish brush. And uh, as you can see, this is really long and I don't need it to be quite that long. So I'm actually just gonna line it up and I'm gonna cut right down either side of the wire and I'm gonna cut off a good bit of material on either side until I just have that tiny little bit left. And I even wanna fan that out and, and just make sure I really get it down to that exact length that I want it to be. And then I'm gonna tie it in by the tip and be really careful because these things are ridiculously sharp on the ends. <clears throat> oh. Didn't get it quite enough. Tie the feathers in by the tips. That's a really bad looking shank there. You can all judge me. But it's gonna work out just fine. One, probably two and a half turns. And again, if you want to control the flare just a little bit more, you can kind of wrap back over those. Tag it with a little bit of super glue. And then I like to take my little comb, my little Stonfo comb here, got tiny little teeth on one end and it's actually got velcro so you can brush dubbing out on the other side and just make sure that I don't have any trapped barbules there on those feathers okay my next 10 millimeter shank my last 10 millimeter shank until I get to the first hook in the fly Should have enough I'm 
my brush left there. I just had to cut a little bit more off. And again, not looking to build a lot of bulk. Just something to help those feathers stand up a little bit to start to build the taper on our fly. Grab my wire cutters, nick that nice and close. <clears throat> and we're gonna grab two feathers, two white, one fluorescent yellow. And again, we're just looking to make each set of feathers a tiny bit bigger than the previous ones. So line up the tips on all three, pinch them together, and then just stroke everything back. Got a little bit of glue in the eye of that uh, shank there. I'm just gonna take a little bit of leftover feather and dab that out. Try not to glue it to myself. And that will be that. So there's our tail section. Grab my brush again, my comb, and just comb out those barbules and make sure everything's free to flutter and move around the way that it should. So there's our tail section. I'm gonna reach down and grab my Gamorous, number four Gamorous hook here. Secure that into my vise. Just go ahead and dress this hook all the way back into the bend a little bit. grab our connection wire. Doesn't take much, just a couple inches at the most. And tie down the shank just a little bit down into the bend a little. That's gonna help it prevent from fouling which I don't have a problem with these fouling much. Not that part of it anyway. <clears throat> Feed that through there. Pull that up nice and tight. And then I'm gonna wrap with moderate tension down to the base. And then what I do is I'll pull up just a little bit to create that little bump right there. And then I'll close it down just enough for that fly to move freely, or for the, the, the tail to move freely. Clip that. Soft wraps around where we clipped off the connection wire. I'm not folding that back because there's no weight. No fish is gonna be holding on back here, so there's no reason to, to double it over. that down just for some extra security. And wrap over the wet glue with some thread wraps. There we go. All right, bait fish brush.
Every time that I trim this, I'm leaving it just a little bit longer. Again, just to inflate the profile of the fly a little bit more at each tie-in. We're gonna go three wraps there. And it's probably not necessary, but I am gonna do two separate material tie-ins on the hook, um, just because I can, and I think it looks nice and it blends the profile a little better. So I'm again, just looking for two feathers on the white that are just a little bigger than last time. And then one that's about the same size in the fluorescent yellow. For muddy water, if you wanted to do straight fluorescent yellow, that's fine. <clears throat> but I like the way that these colors kind of blend and bleed together. with the two white and one fluorescent. And I'm immediately noticing that I don't like how that's looking, so I'm gonna back those off. And we're gonna get feathers that are a little bit bigger. Because it's coming up a little bit too far shy of that connection. Again, it's all about controlling how full each tie down is. You want them to stand up a little bit more and a little bit more as you move all the way forward to the head of the fly. the way that wrapped all you got to do is back off back off your tension tie in another section you're so much better off to do it now than to spend all this time tying the fly that you look at and hate every time you see it in your box and there we go just a little fuller back to our bait fish brush just trying to palmer those back. I mean, there's no way you're gonna get this perfect every time. You just do the best that you can. <clears throat> Pinch and hold them back. And just tie back over that a little bit. Free our brush. And if you see any really long pieces of prop material, you can always go in with your scissors and just tidy up a little bit. Don't get too hung up on it. It's not the end of the world. And as you can see, people make game changers out to be these impossible to tie flies. They're not impossible to tie. They're time consuming. But in my opinion, they are worth the investment. I mean, I don't have like hundreds of these things laying around because I don't have time to tie that many. But it's winter here in Ohio still and it's February and the wind's blowing at about 50 miles an hour outside today. And this is the perfect time to spend on fiddly annoying flies in my opinion. And I'm not a perfect fly tire. I'm certainly not the authority on these. All I'm doing is 
kind of showing you my process. How I choose to tie these things. There's people who are way better at this than I am. <clears throat> but I can also tell you that my flies catch fish just like theirs do, so. free that one and as you can see there we're starting to see that taper build and just get a little bit beefier as we move up forward all right back to the prop I think that was about four, four and a half turns of the prop material this time. Reaching a little higher up, grabbing a little bit bigger feathers. This fluorescent yellow saddle is just absolutely beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and attach the back section of the fly to the lead hook. <clears throat> now, something I wanna mention here, you do not need to tie that second hook into this fly. It is completely unnecessary. Um, <clears throat> I show it because a lot of people ask me to put that hook in when I tie these for them. Um, that's fine, it adds a little bit of length. I guess it's an extra layer of security. Um, I'm sure that you're probably going to save a few fish on there. However, in my experience, every big smallmouth I think I've ever caught has eaten the head of the fly. Um, so I don't get hung up on having to have that, that, that second hook um, in there. Um, honestly, the only thing it ever does is uh, poke a few extra holes in me while I'm tying the fly. To each their own. You do what you want to do and I'll do what I want to do. But if you want to do it, there it is. And uh, if you don't, you can just omit it and add another shank. Um, or you can just omit it altogether and just have a slightly shorter fly. Nothing wrong with that either. So I'm just going to cut off a couple inches worth of wire here and start dressing the shank of my lead hook.
I know a lot of people might feel like you need to bend that wire back and then tie back over it. The only thing that does is build extra bulk. I don't know how many pounds this vise weighs, what the base is. I think it's at least five pounds, but I'm gonna show you something real quick. I haven't glued this down, okay? But watch, I can take this thing and I can hold this vise in the air and that wire is not coming loose, okay? I can sit here and shake it and it's not gonna break loose. So just something to keep in mind for when you're wanting to bend those wires back. If it makes you feel better, by all means, go ahead. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just really unnecessary. Um, <clears throat> and it does, it builds a lot of extra bulk and just takes longer to tie. And I, I would just assume do it that way and be done. Now, just to add an extra layer of security, I will go ahead and just tag that with a little bit of glue. And now it's all but bulletproof. I mean, I could hang off of this thing and the shanks will break before that wire lets loose. Probably gonna end up doing two or three sets of like prop, feather, prop, feather, prop, feather. Um, we'll just kind of see how it goes. And then I'm gonna finish this fly off uh, with some really nice kind of bubblegum light pink um, at the head. So now I'm gonna be using my prop at its full length and I'm gonna put those wraps in there side by side. Towards the back, I would kind of corkscrew wrap them in. Now I'm piling one right on top of the next to really build a nice dense prop to hold my feathers up for a long period of time. And the purpose of the prop material isn't just to control the flare while I'm tying it, it's to keep the flare into the fly throughout the life of the fly. My first couple of game changers I tied, I didn't use any prop material and um, they actually fished okay. The problem that I ran into was um, after about four times out on the river, they looked more like a snake and less like a bait fish and uh, they just, they flatten out completely and they don't move quite as good after they they, they snake out like that. Um, the way that the water moves over them changes and it's just not, not like a game changer, not like I want it to be anymore. So that's, the prop helps a lot. Towards the head of the fly, if you start running out of long enough feathers, what you can do is start using schlopping. Um, I do that all the time. <clears throat> and it works just fine. You can switch over to a brush and finish the head with a brush. That works great, I do that too. Um, don't feel like you have to continue to use just feathers and and um, the flash brush, it's, uh, it's not necessary. All right, down to my last section here. We're gonna use a little bit more flash brush. This ended up taking exactly one of these brushes to complete. I'm reach in for my pink head here. And I'm just gonna find three of the longest pink feathers I can squeeze out of here. for this last section that we really squeeze as many wraps as we can out of these feathers to get a nice dense bulky head. I 
And I will go ahead and even include a little bit of that under fluff. It looks just fine in the water. I know a lot of people don't like the way that that looks in the vise, but what it looks like in the vise doesn't really concern me all that much. I care about how it fishes more than anything. <laughs> the head of this fly has turned into an abomination, but that's okay. It's going to fish just fine. Blue that slipped back in there. And there you have it. There's our nice tapered game changer. Uh, small mouth sized. This would be a pre-spawn pattern that I would absolutely lean on. Um, these things fish great. They wiggle a ton. They've got that awesome serpentine action. Um, when you strip and pause, they dart side to side and sometimes they'll even do like a 180. Um, really fun fly to fish. Um, depending on who you are, it's a fun fly to tie. Some of you might not agree with that, but uh, I really like them. I enjoy tying them and uh, I hope you tie some up for yourself. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <sighs>